If you haven't been to Dishoom yet, stop whatever you're doing, book a train or a flight to London, Birmingham, Edinburgh or Manchester and get in the queue. There'll always be a queue by the way. Their signature dish, the Black Doll, is a cut above the rest. The dish is their version of Dal Magni but without kidney beans. Best of all, it's so easy to make and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So first, let's look at what we need. You'll need 300 grams of black dal or uruk dal. It goes by a few different names, but you'll be able to find it at most Asian supermarkets. Then we've got a couple of bits of ginger and some garlic cloves. We've got 70 grams of tomato puree. Well, we call it tomato puree in the UK. This stuff's called tomato paste in the US. We'll be using a couple of different spices. We've got one third teaspoon of garam masala. I've just used some supermarket blend here. We're also using two thirds of a teaspoon of deggy merch chili powder. Well, actually I'm using Kashmiri chili powder because that's all I had. It's milder, but it also worked because again, we're only using a small amount. Speaking of small amounts, we've got two teaspoons of vegetable oil. And finally, we've got our dairy. The dish is heavy on butter and cream. You could use less, but the dish will obviously be less creamy. Anyways, I've used 90 grams of butter and the same goes for double cream. You'll need 90 grams of it. That being said, I was doing a little bit of an experiment on this recording and I made two batches of the dal. I made one with 45 grams of double cream and I made another with 45 grams of Greek yogurt. The double cream is delicious but it's high in fat and calories. The yogurt does reduce the dish's calories and adds a little bit more protein. And to be honest, the yogurt version was just as nice, though it didn't quite look as appealing. You can use either depending on your nutritional requirements. So to start, let's peel this ginger and garlic. A useful tip, by the way, just keep a compost bowl on hand so you can keep all your vegetable scraps together instead of walking over to the bin every single time. Another tip, you do not need any fancy tools to peel ginger. You can literally just use a spoon. So crush the garlic with the blade of your knife and toss the skins into your compost bin. Once the skins off both, just chop everything off. It doesn't need to be too fine as the blender will do most of the work, but we'll mince it a little bit. It. Throw in the ginger and garlic and add all of the vegetable oil. Give it a mix and then blend it. This blender isn't very good with small quantities of food. As you can see, it's all got stuck. So I added a little bit of extra oil and water. Don't worry about extra water as the dish uses a lot of water anyways. So you can always simmer to reduce it later. Now that the garlic and ginger paste is ready, we're going to clean the dal. So grab a large bowl and put the dal in. Fill the bowl with water so the dal's completely submerged. We're then going to whisk it a few times for 10 seconds just to remove any debris. This is more useful if your dal is older, but there's no harm in doing it even if you've just bought it. Whisk for 10 seconds, strain the water, add more water and then repeat that three to four times. Now that the dal is clean, we're ready to start cooking. We'll be using about four litres of water at most at any point during this whole process, so about a six litre pan would be ideal I'd say. The pan I'm using here is way too big, but it's the most adequate size I had. Anyway, whatever. Throw the dal into a pan with four litres of water and bring to a boil over medium high heat. Meanwhile, stand around in your pyjamas looking busy. We want to keep the dal at a boil, but not too aggressively, so medium high heat's ideal. As the dal boils, skim off any imperfections that rise to the surface and toss them away. After a while, the water will start to turn black and the dal will soften. Make sure to stir it regularly, by the way. The dal will probably take about two to three hours to cook. You can tell when it's ready by squeezing it. It should be kind of creamy, not crumbly. You can add more water if you run out, by the way, so it doesn't stick with the bottom as it has for me here. If it does stick, don't worry. You can deglaze the bottom of the pan by adding boiling water and just scraping. Once the dal's cooked, turn off the heat and let it sit there for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, strain the dal through a fine mesh strainer. You don't need to dry off the dal completely, just get rid of most of the water. Throw the dal back into the pan and cover with three to four centimeters of water and bring it to a boil over medium high heat. Meanwhile, while that's coming to a boil, we'll make our tomato paste. So grab a bowl or container and mix together your garlic and ginger paste that you made earlier, the tomato puree, chili powder, garam masala, and a few generous pinches of salt. Don't go overboard with the salt, by the way. You can always add more later. So give all that a good stir, taste it, and then realize that it tastes way too strong to be enjoyed at this point. Put it aside and regret your decisions in life. Back to the pan. Once that's at a boil, give it a good stir. As before, you want to stir regularly. Throw in the butter and the tomato paste mix that we've just made and cook it a boil for about 30 minutes. You can start to see that iconic orange tinge of the black dal coming through at this point, and it should be also smelling ridiculously good. You've got to keep an eye on it at this point though because the water can disappear very, very fast. That's coming from experience. After 30 minutes, turn the heat down to low and let it simmer for about an hour and a half. 
You don't need to do this part, but after an hour and a half, once my dal was cooked, I split it between two different pans. I added yogurt to one and cream to the other. I added cream to the blue pan and yogurt to the silver one. You can see straight away the cream pan looks so much more appealing. I should have maybe mixed the yogurt with some water to stop it from coagulating, but oh well. Anyway. In your case, just add either yogurt or cream, depending on which one you're using, to the pan that you're already cooking the dal in. You don't need to add it to a new pan. Let it simmer for about 50 minutes and then it's ready. The dal is best served with chapati or rice and you can eat it hot or cold. I find that it tastes even better after a day in the fridge. And there you have it. It takes time, requires a little bit of patience, but it's really not too difficult and certainly worth the effort. You can find the full recipe in the description of this video or you can pick up Dishoom's cookbook. There's a link for that in the description as well.